A few days ago, President Bola Tinubu crossed the symbolic 100 days in office, which coincided with the delivery of judgment on the petition against the victory of the Presidential Election Petition Tribunal. The first 100 days of President Bola Tinubu and his administration have been laced with praise and blame. Upon the inauguration on May 29, 2023, President Tinubu vowed to revamp the economy with renewed hope slogan. But the ripple effects of his economic policies leave Nigerians with a sweet and a sour taste. Joining us to discuss this is John Desmond. He's a member of the APC PCC Media and Publicity Directorate. Also joining us is Kayade Salako. He's a former chairman of the Labour Party. Gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us and good evening. Yes, good evening. Thank you. Good evening. I'm going to start with you, um, sir, because you're a member of the APC. Um, let's start by looking at what you think or how well you think the president has fared um, in his 100 days in office. One of the very first things that the president said that reverberated across the country is subsidy is gone. And here we are, 100 days after, um, you know, 100 days into his administration, Nigerians seem to be, um, you know, um, agonizing about the situation of things. But as an insider... Um, tell us exactly where you think or how well you think Mr. President has done so far. Thank you very much. You know, one of the activities to mark the 100 days is a big congratulations to Nigerians today. You might have heard that uh, the president was in UAE today and had a meeting with the leaders of that country and they have just lifted a ban on a visa restriction on Nigerians. You know, that is another milestone for our nations to mark the 100 days of President uh, Tinubu in office. Now, having said that, what are the major highlights, major achievements of his administration so far in these 100 days? The first was uh, the first subsidy that has been holding the whole nation to ransom. At the inauguration day, he said the subsidy is gone, and it's gone forever. So far, so good. The president has put some major, you know, in forms of palliatives, in forms of grants to state to cushion the effect. Look at the appointments. We have the constitutional appointment. We have the executive appointment. Look at the, how widely spread, how accepted, how happy Nigerians are. Look at programs that have been rolled out. So far, so good. Student loan has been rolled out. When this president noticed that Nigerians are not happy with some of the policies that were being rolled out, he immediately came on stage to a national broadcast and let us know that this is not a one-man show. This is a people-oriented president. I am a people's president. And he talked to us immediately. Look at the communications between him and the governors and the ministers. You know, it is a welcome development. 100 days is not the total day, but in 100 days, he has started on a good note. And Nigerians are happy. We, our party from the APC, we believe everybody is now seeing what it means to have hope renewed in the Nigeria that we believe. So in 100 days, in, it will be fair to all of us, the president is on a good course, and we hope that it's going to land well. Interesting. I want to take you back to the issue of subsidy. Now, you said that um, Nigerians should be excited that hope is being renewed. What hope exactly is being renewed? The naira to the dollar is um, almost 1,000. Um, the, the, the cost of living is very high. It's hit the roof, and it's going beyond the roof. Uh, as we speak right now, um, a lot of people have not necessarily been able to afford um, to go to their places of work um, as they used to. Um, like I said, transportation has more than doubled, even though um, they've said that there, some states, like Lagos State, have subsidized um, public transportation only for those who are taking public transportation. Again, um, school fees are being increased and the, the, the value of the Naira is still low. 
Um, let's talk also about, you know, the situation that we have um, in terms of the subsidy removal. Is subsidy really gone? And the picture that was painted to the average Nigerian about this removal of subsidy was to reduce the corruption in the sector and make it easier for us to access this crude. Um, but unfortunately, that's not necessarily the case. The issue of corruption, I know, cannot be done in one day. Um, so again, subsidy is gone. But poverty for Nigerians have come to stay. A lot of people have now categorized Nigerians into three different categories. The rich, the poor, the poorest of the poor, and of course, those who have no hope. <laughs> well, <laughs> this is, this your analysis tonight, it's a, uh, it's, it's a, uh, it's, 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 it's interesting. I but then, the what is subsidy and what is the effect of subsidy on our nation? Money that will have been used for infrastructural development to reduce the future poverty rate, to build and develop institutional framework for prosperity has been in the hand of few individuals who have not been using it. From the removal of subsidy, what was the FAC allocation after the removal of subsidy in our nation history? 1.9 trillion euro. Subsequently, the FAC begins to grow. This is just three months after. So the money gotten from subsidy cannot be used to transform Nigeria overnight. But this money, as time goes on, are going to be put into infrastructural development. Should the president have thought will... about the um, cushioning effects before he no. openly talks no. about... No, no, sorry, just hold on. Should the president have thought about... Because, of course, I'm guessing that whoever wants to be the president of this country knows the situation of things. Should the president have considered these so-called palliatives or cushioning effects. I hate palliatives because that word makes it look like we're begging for something. Um, should, he, um, should he have considered um, that before going on with this statement of palliatives, um, or rather subsidy is gone, as opposed to now having to backtrack and look for ways to ameliorate the sufferings? And how many people can these five billion that have been given to states really get to? And... Um, Palliatives to cushion the effect cannot solve the problem of poverty. It's important to know. Palliative are just immediate major to enable you prepare to get used to the system and make alternatives to succeed and survive within the system. That's number one. Number two, we have heard from our nation history that removing subsidy has been a great challenge for every leader that has come and gone. So where do we need to begin from? We need to attack it the way it comes. Okay. And thank God the president was bold, the president was confident enough and get it done. Now, where we are now is what can we do to quickly get out of the corner drum? Okay. And that is why the president said, okay, look, let's get this on the table. We are not going to live with palliative, okay? But to caution the effect, the immediate effect, okay. state, take seven, uh, five, five billionaire. Okay. It's not left for those who got billionaire to divest it, to invest it, to change the life of the citizen in the future. Okay, all right. Please, for to take this one. Okay. Get used to the system and adjust to the system. That All is right. the essence of palliative. All right, Mr. Palliative Desmond, just hold on. Stronger. Just hold on. I'm going to come back to you and tackle you a bit more on this issue of palliatives. Uh, Mr. Salakot, let me come to you. You obviously are, are of the Labour Party. Um, you, um, again, you have been hit hard by the verdict uh, of the PEPT, which has solidified Mr. President's position as, indeed, the President of the Federal Republic. But then... Again, the country has to move on. Um, the 100 days of Mr. President is what we're looking at now. And I want to quickly quote the 
Honorable Minister uh, for Information, Mohammed Idris, uh, who noted that the country's public debts, both local and foreign, coupled with the unsustainable fuel subsidy regime created by um, created a gapping hole, rather, in public finance and rendered three tiers of government insolvent. But he says, in solving that problem, Mr. Tinubu took a bold, courageous decision to remove fuel subsidy to avert a national economic catastrophe of epic proportions. Does that not necessarily describe the situation that we're in right now? I might be wrong, but please correct me. Yeah, thank you very much. Um, good evening, Nigerians. And um, I want to join my brother in the, on this show to congratulate Nigerians for the successful uh, running of the country by Mr. President, the Commander in Chief. Uh, of the armed, um, armed forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu. Let me also say this, that I am no longer a member of the Labour Party. Um, I told the person who reached out to me to be on this show in the evening that yes, I am the immediate past state chairman of the Labour Party. So which makes, me, which makes me a former chairman of the Labour Party. But I have since gone back to my party, which is the All Progressive Congress. Oh, I see. APC. Interesting. So I am a chieftain of APC. Okay. Right now. I'm no longer a Labour Party. Ah, perfect. But and, um, So go ahead and answer my question, please. Yes, I have to let you first, I have to clarify that. Because Thank I'm on air. Point well taken. Now, to come back to your question. To come back to your question. Um, Mr. President is a man that Nigerians should um, have faith, keep faith with his capability and ability to deliver on his promises. To the, today and tomorrow of Nigeria, he is a man that is capacity do, has do never you need been me to ask, I'm sorry, Mr. Salako, do you need me to ask the question again? Because I don't think you got my question. First 100 days has not disappointed in Nigeria like me. Because it is not always easy to be a change agent in a peculiar society such as Nigeria. Okay. Mr. President inherited a peculiar situation which you and I can attest to. The situation of Nigeria was are very critical economically, politically, socially. Mr. Salako, are you there? Can you hear me? The winner by the Independent National Electoral Commission. So, he has taken both moves, he has taken both steps. Steps that they are not taken, then there is no hope of survival. Okay, so these, step, these the steps that the president have taken, I'm going to ask you my question again because you did not hear me. I know that you want to praise seeing the president, but let's go back to the question that I asked. I am not the president. I'm so, so sorry, hold on. Let me ask my I question again. Uh, Mr. Salako, can I ask my question again? I, I did read okay. you a statement by the information minister. And, of course, the situation of the economy. And I asked you a simple question. What the, the minister um, described, is that not the situation that we're in right now? What situation did he describe? I'm sure you didn't hear my question, but let me read it again. Well, the minister said that the president took a bold and courageous step to 
removed fuel subsidy to avert national economic catastrophe of epic proportions. And I'm asking, isn't that a description of somewhat of a description of what we're experiencing right now as a country in, this, in the space of 100 days? That is exactly what I've been saying. That is exactly what I've been saying. I've been talking in um, response to what the minister has said. He has taken both decisions, both steps, both decisions, and he has been audacious in the way he has operated so far. A critical problem needs critical solution. And it is, I'm going to say it is a bold man like President Bola Tinumbu who could come out, take over the affairs of governance at the federal level in Nigeria, and start setting the ball rolling, rolling immediately by taking such bold steps. He has taken courageous decisions and I want to assure Nigerians that those decisions are going to pay off on the long run. So now in Nigerians the so in the short term Mr. Shalako Yes, in the short term. The in the short term, because I always like to see, I, I like to talk about, you know, quick goals that we can achieve before we talk about the long term. In the short term, Mr. President has asked Nigerians over and over again to be patient with him, to manage. Um, again, I go back to the five billion that's been given to states. Um, and we hear here in Lagos, several people have complained about the fact that these, alleged rather, that these so-called palliatives have been given to their friends and their cronies, and members of the All Progressive Congress. Let's even say that these are allegations. Um, how many people can these so-called palliatives, um, you know, get to? How many people can benefit from it? Um, how long can this last for, I mean, for those who are getting dairy cars of rice and some people are getting Gary, et cetera, et cetera, how long can it last them? And for those who, who do not, are not categorized as the poorest of the poor, for the others who their businesses have been affected, um, for the people who no longer have the purchasing power as they used to, for those who, whose um, um, take-home pay no longer is able to take them home, what happens to them in the interim? Because whether we like it or not, everything that's biting is biting everyone, except for those who probably are you know, in power, who don't necessarily have to buy fuel, who don't necessarily have to deal with the situation of things that we're dealing with. What happens in the interim? How can our situation be addressed right now? While we wait for Mr. President's long-term plan, what can be done in the short term? Please don't tell me that yes, the, the palliatives will let work. Me say this. Let me say this, bit: That there is no gain sometimes if there is no pain. Even before President Tinubu came on board, Nigerians have been complaining. Nigerians have been going through what they are going through now. During President Obama's just period, Nigerians complained of the same hardship. That was the reason the man couldn't get the third time um, opportunity to continue to run Nigeria. Nigerians complained during his time. During President Gulag Tolaga's time, Nigerians complained. During President Gerard Ross's time, can, can, can we, Nigerians complained. Since, since we're, and I want to go back to uh, Mr. Desmond, but let me, let me, let me, let me, time, let me come complained. in, let me come in there. Since we want you to, see, the issue is I'm sorry, Mr. Salako, since we want to compare governments, what was the, what was the value of the Naira under Abbas Anjou's administration, under Yaradra's administration, under the Good Luck Jonathan's administration. What was Nigeria's earning rate in terms of crude um, compared to what it is today, since we want to make those comparisons? By, by, by and, 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 and by saying that Nigerians are complaining, were things as bad as they are today as compared to those governments, since we're making comparisons? Yes. I am one they of were? Nigerian, I really? am one of those Nigerians that are going through the action. Because 
I know that you're going through the hardship Nigeria, now, or you were going through the hardship then. And I'm going through it myself too. Oh, okay, perfect. I'm a Thank Nigerian. goodness you know that. I'm okay. passing through it, and I am sure that a lot of Nigerians too are passing through that. But it is a it's a phase in the life of a country that is still looking for how to get a very right economically. It is a phase. I was a little boy when a musician sang it. Uh, the late Victor Laya, he was a high life musician. He sang it in Yoruba language. I was a little boy then. When, the, when his song says, Iluleo, go so wolo de. Iluleo, go so wolo de. O kuriki be, o biriki be. Kaluku, lo ki be owo. I was a little boy then. And up to now, the lyrics and content of that song, the that message to that song, is irrelevant. That is to let you know that globally, as life progresses, things tend to be harder, you know, with life. The same way we are complaining in Nigeria is the same way my people, my family members, friends, are complaining about the situation of the economy in the UK. It is like that in can America. you compare? Can you compare? It's I, 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 and it's very interesting how it's very it's easy for you to global. compare. You, I'm sorry. It's very easy for you to quickly compare yourself to other parts of the world where they have the basics that they need in their country. What are the basic amenities yeah. that you have been able to access in this country? Do you have 24 hours light? How is your transportation system? What are the road infrastructures like? It's very easy for us to well, compare no, ourselves. Agree, no, no, no. I, 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 that was a rhetorical question. I wasn't asking you to answer. But no, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Hold on. That was a rhetorical question. I didn't need your response. I want to go back to Mr. Desmond now. I'm sorry. I I'm, I'm sorry, Mr. Salako. Can we take? I want us to go to Mr. Desmond quickly. Mr. Desmond, what are the things Nigeria that we can? Is a developing I, country. I'm sorry, Mr. Salako. Please let Mr. It's Desmond a speak. Country. Can we let Mr. Desmond speak, please? Thank you very much. Mr. Desmond, what are the things that Nigerians can hold on to under President Tinubu's 100, off, uh, 100 days in office? How, um, what are those things that people can hold on to in terms of the hope that you have been talking about? Uh, what can they hold on to and hope upon um, that maybe in the next two to three months or maybe before the year wraps, uh, that they might be able to breathe, actually, some form of fresh air? Thank you very much for this question. Uh, Mr. Desmond, are you still there? Can you hear me? Father, in the past 100 days, you see that during the executive appointment, the widespread, the acceptance of the people, that this has led to restoration of national ethnical dignity. Immediately after the executive appointment, people no longer talk about nepotism. The word nepotism ceases from public space in Nigeria. Okay? Because we need to hold on to something to drive us to our destination. Mm. That's number one. Number two, the of job creation. Because the challenge of our nation is, as you were talking to, you were saying to Salaki, is our inability to develop the basics of human development. 60 years ago, 60 years ago, between 1939 and 1943, the United States of America was under depression, not recession. That's it. It was under depression. Mr. Salakov, you know would I you mean? please let him speak? Thank you. Go that ahead. means we have suffered a lot, a lot that instead of us category, categorizing and looking at the recession they are facing, they move from recessional phase to depressional phase. 60 years after, that country is among the top nations on earth. 
So the second thing that Nigerians should renew their hope with is infrastructural and institutional framework for development by the grace of God as it has started in um, uh, Lagos then. They just launched their blue rail. The minister of FCT, the president told him, I want to ride on your blue rail. The state government, the palliative that has given to them in form of ground, they should not use that money, that five billion naira for consumption. They should deploy it into key infrastructural development, short-term infrastructural development. Okay. In a, excuse me, in Abuja, the cost of riding on Kano line to Abuja is 5,500 naira. That is Kano line. I wish Edo line is still available. Are they lying? No, we need to look at the future. Okay. All right. Uh, I, 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 I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. Our time is up. I want to thank you, gentlemen. I'm so sorry. We have to go. But I want to say thank you. Jordan Desmond is a member of the APC, PCC Media and Publicity Directories. And Kayade Salako is former chairman of the Labour Party, who is now a member of the All Progressive Congress. Thank you so much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Unfortunately, time is not on our Thank side. Thank you for having us on the show. Thank you very much. All right, we'll take Thank a quick break. Me. We'll take a quick break now. And when we come back, we'll be discussing the NNPP and, of course, the recent troubles within the party. Stay with us.